might result in the six-inch line that's there being reduced down to as little as four inches, which is not terribly practical. Yeah. Bold excavation of the line was investigated, but the price of between 175000 and 250000 plus the disruption to the street for up to a week while the trench was dug, the pipe was laid, and the trench refilled made that option somewhat unattractive. In investigating alternatives, the Ted Berry Company was contacted, who recommended trenchless line replacement. And at this point, Clem, you're supposed to show the video. I'm not turning off the lights totally, I'm just turning them down. It's on, it's on. Just once. Get it once. Okay. Begin.
to 36 inch in throughout New England. Typical benefits of pipe resting include a trenchless replacement technology that installs a new pipe with the same or larger inner diameter in place of an existing pipe, a reduction in excavation by as much as 90% when compared to traditional open cut construction, a reduction in social disturbance and reduced construction time frame when compared to traditional open cut construction, a reduction in environmental impact and carbon emissions by as much as 90%. In many parts of the country, pipe bursting is still considered a new technology. However, pipe bursting has been performed throughout Europe for more than 40 years and is a proven component of many long-term capital improvement programs in the United States. Suzanne and say, would you change your mind? But yes. Uh, so I, I watched the, the YouTube video of that budget committee meeting. Uh, yes. So my understanding was that they just didn't have enough votes to pass it. They so didn't. According oh to God. Suzanne, in order to get an affirmative vote, you needed a majority of all the members of the budget committee. Understood. Which is seven. And not all of them were there. No, they weren't. A quorum existed, but not, they didn't get seven positive votes. Okay. Is it, is it feasible to kind of regroup and then go back to them? We could try. However, the Budget Committee has met and rendered its opinion. I, I don't know if going back hat in hand is going to help. Okay. Because well, time is running. Yes. I mean, people appeal decisions. I don't see. Well, we need a little more support from the community then. Because the three people who voted against it, Lynn, Spring, Emily from the school board, and Denise Knowles, you abstained. I I, yes, that's correct. Yeah. I'm raising my hand to say something. Yes. If you'll allow. So having been uh, at that meeting and a member of the budget committee, we didn't outright deny 
the opportunity to do this. We asked a lot of questions around process and if people in the district knew, in the water sewer district, knew what this plan was and that it was going to happen. We were particularly concerned, and the reason that it got four um, opposing votes is that we were concerned about the school and what would happen with bus transportation while Willie Street was compromised in this process. Maybe it would be shut down. There was some, there was some gaps in communication. It wasn't the project itself. I abstained and felt that what I, I, I've been, <laughs> I've been concerned about this project for months now and have been advocating to do something about it. So I, I couldn't exactly vote against it. That didn't feel right. But I couldn't vote for it because no one in the community knew about it. So I just want to make clear that it wasn't that the budget committee did not want this to happen. It was about process and timing and communication. And I think the budget committee would be completely open to revisiting this discussion at its next meeting on Wednesday. Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, thank you, Tuesday. Uh, I think the concern is the amount of time that is left between now and when it gets when the weather turns uh, really cold. Tonight is, you know, it's pretty warm tonight out there, so perhaps this project can still go forward. It's not that we did not want the project to happen. Please be clear about that. It was really more about process and communication. And I, I can't speak for the budget committee, but I think we were all open to have the hearing and let the community know what's going on and then bring the concern back, bring the project back. Uh, I think the technology looks really terrific, and it seems to have, I went online and looked at the company. I was impressed by the five-star ratings they got from the cities and towns that where they've done the work. Uh, it wasn't about the project. It certainly isn't about the commissioners wanting this project to go forward. We supported that, but nobody knows about it, and that is the problem. So, so what do we need to do? Yeah. So, um, I'm sorry, Judy. I'm representing the school, so I'm representing. I'm sorry, you're not a member of the district. I'm the sorry. Oh, those are yes, the rules. Um, Aaron, would you mind? Aaron, sure. Um, I'm sorry. Would you mind asking? Um, essentially, since we've known about it for years, so why is the ceremony? It will affect the school. It adversely affect the school, and we just need to understand. What can I move that she be allowed to mm -hmm. speak? Because she's on yes, the school Yes. You mean as a guest? As a yes. guest? Yes. I saw Now we need a vote. Those in favor of allowing Judy Nelson to speak, although she's not a member of the district, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. That's the process. Th thank you. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, certainly, I mean, I, I, will, I will start off by saying that every member of the school board that I've, I've talked to in the school itself wants to be good neighbors and wants this to happen because it, it's something that we know affects Willie Street tremendously. But what we don't understand is why this is suddenly an emergency measure um, that has to be done now with, uh, with the possibility of maybe having to close the school, not having buses be able to get in, no room for staff to park, I mean all those kinds of things that have not been, the school has not really been aware of until just recently, I guess. Um, so. So what has made it an emergency to happen now since you've known about it for years? That would be my first question. Winter. I'm sorry. We're coming to the end of the construction season. This is the best time to get people like this in place. If we have to wait till after March when we get authorization to expand the budget, they may not be able to schedule this for quite some time because they're very popular and they do a great job and so there'll be a lot of demand on their services. It's like strike while the iron is hot. Uh, then, if, uh, if people will indulge me, I have just a couple other questions. May because, I just because that? Great. No. So, so you are you done? You, 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 you yield the floor. Although, I, if you want clarification on what I what was just said, yes. Okay. My understanding from previous meetings, Vern, was that it had to be done by December 31 because of some um, money issues. If we assess a special, if we put it in as an extra charge on the bill, Yes. it has to be done in the fiscal year in which it's charged. Okay. Okay, that's a fiscal year. If we put it into next year, there, actually our attorney said there was a way to do it to overlap into the next year. So, 
Could you clarify, as of last meeting, we had several discussions over the last meetings about this special assessment. Yes. Are we not looking at a special assessment anymore? Yes, but our attorney advises us that because of the way it's done, because you initiated it in 2019, you could hold, do the assessment over into the next year. Okay. Eliminating the need to have it done, physically done by no. the end of the year. Physically? No, no. Physically, it's winter is our thing. Winter is our limit. We might be able to do this over an entire year for the assessment. Okay. Think of the assessment separately from actually putting shovels in dirt. Well, that's kind of my point of clarification because previously <coughs> the issue has been doing it by December 31st because your information at hand during those meetings was it had to be done and we had to collect the special assessment which would be somewhat $295 per person or it's gone down a little bit okay but I'm just the reason I'm clarifying that is when I last left the, the last meeting that was where we were headed right and we've gotten more we've gotten better information since then more information okay for those who complain about how much we spend on legal fees this is why we spend money on legal fees we have an attorney who's really good well, at this sort of thing okay so I'm just asking for that information Okay, there it is. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Judy. No, I just, so, so in, in terms of how this might affect the school, I'm not quite sure. I, um, I did hear from Emily that I believe you, you said at the uh, budget committee hearing that it was going to be three, day, three days would be the... At the outside, yeah. Unless the outside, we bring some disaster. You're saying four? Four is the outside. Four is the outside. At the outside. But that it would be possible to have water to the school so and that it would be water. completely functional. Yes. Cooking, bathrooms, yes. drinking, and it would be potable water. Yes. I think it was part of the estimate they had to provide potable water for all homes that have been Everything affected by the pipe replacement. Yeah. Okay. And, um, that, and, and the reason we're doing it before winter is because this is going to have to run on top of the ground. And doing it before winter, you can do it before everything freezes. Once it starts getting too cold, Shut it down. You can't run your water on top of the ground. So no. how confident are we that we're going to have four days without any freezes? Well, here's the bigger thing. The, the pavement plans. If we have sustained good weather, the pavement plans two years ago stayed open until almost January. If we get an early snap, it's going to go down because the projects will go down with it. So it strictly depends on how the weather is. But the sooner we get it in, the better. That's the bottom line. Uh, um, either that or it's next spring, and by the time it's it budgeting next, next spring, summer. it could be next summer, exactly, and they've already told us that. It's just like trying to get a driveway paved now. So have, has, has the commission been have, been working with Principal Hartford and, and Dick Fortier to, fit, to, to let them know what, how, what the impact will be on the school? The only contact I've had with Dick Fortier was to find out how large the supply line for domestic water is into the building and it's a two inch so so this has not been discussed with the school and the impact no. that it will really have on it because we will be disrupting you know 160 students and their families let alone the staff i mean this is this is sort of a tough pill to swallow at the 11th and a half hour so i'm just just trying to understand where we're at here that the time the timing is poor <laughs> for the school well, Yes, yes, it would be great if we had this in like June because school would be out and it wouldn't really have an impact. We would still be able to provide water to the school. It's also April vacation. The problem is we're running into the scheduling of the contractors. This is a small section. This is a small operation. They're not going to miss something like doing all of old, old Orchard Beats in order to get this. This is like getting your driveway paid. They're finishing up, they've got extra, they give you a good deal this time of year. So this is good timing and... And, and, and frankly, we didn't have this a month ago when everybody was asking about this. was a big discussion. Right. Um, Suzanne kept going, well, we need to process, we need this. We need to get these people to water. And this logistics, as far as the buses go, those buses line up all the way down Locust Street now. 
That is a matter of management, and it's a simple one. Having done evacuations in all kinds of places, this is relatively simple. You bring the buses up. Instead of going down Willie Street, they go down Round Pine. They, they do not release students on Willie on, on they, they pull into the parking lot to release students. students Except are for not the, released from the street. They can walk them to the street. They walk them other days to the street. Oh, uh, well, what, I, what, I was, what I was asking is if you have worked with Principal Hartford and is, is no, letting the school know that there will be this extra work. Plus, there needs to be parking for the staff. They can still get into the parking lot. Well, I, I understood that the parking lot would not be available. No, the, the parking st lot on the, on the Willie Street side would not Willie be available. Street side, you'd have to go around the building. It is, it is not a three-way. That is only a fire lane. That drives through the that drives through the playground. I mean, again, this is why this is I, I don't know the answers to all this. This is why I was asking if you had if you had worked with Principal Hartford on this. We can only tell you what we know. So, so if we can't I, negotiate. Let's do it on the Saturday and the Sunday. No, but, but let me ask you again. Then, I mean, will will there be someone? Uh, will that happen? Will there be coordination with Principal Hartford? It has to be. And I mean well, beforehand, so that everything can be set up. I don't know what coordination we can do. I mean, we're going to dig pits. We're, Willie Street will be closed down for a couple of days. What can we do? Well, will there be a project manager on site throughout who will be coordinating oh, yes. with, with, with the, with the, with the, with with the homeowners the and, 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 the, and the principal? With the contractors, yes. And, and the homeowners and the yes. principal? Yes. And, and the homeowners should be contacted and individually, those, and face those, to face. And the principal. And the principal. I mean, but what they want to do, that's a whole other problem. This is this is a simple management problem. I hate to say that, but part of the problem is you cannot manage well, something you do not know about. That is all I'm saying. That is all I'm saying. The school is simply being a little blindsided by this. There is work to be done. It's not the same as going out of your driveway in the morning and driving back in. Of course, wait, wait, wait. Let, let us and what thing to this? At this point, it's a no go. Because the budget committee has not endorsed it. I think, much like the school board, I think many members of the budget committee will support this because this is very important to everyone who lives on Willie Street. We understand that. All, all we're asking is that it be well considered, that the timing be well considered, and, and, the, and, that, and that there is a way to coordinate some of these things. It really seems when like a When the contractor is ready to go, the contractor is ready to go, and there's really not much we can do about that. Yes, fine. Can we get representative, the contractor down here to meet with the district and the school board? We're spending more time. It'll have to be quick. I understand that next week to arrange something that we can, if they're available. It's not so the school board. I believe it will be the state. The, the, the principal and, and whatnot to see what's going on. So they know what's happening from the contractor. What's going to be involved? We do a site and visit at the same time. Yeah. So it's pictured. I can try. If we can do that, I think it would be the way to go. I can try. I can't guarantee anything. But, but it's and it may be on short notice. I understand that. Okay. That being said, at this point, it's a no-go. Remember that. So this is all very academic. <coughs> I understand, but if we want to do it this year, I suggest the meeting take place. If it doesn't happen this year, then we'll know what has to happen next time around when it comes to Yeah, there's more lead time. That's right. We won't have winter breathing down the I just, you keep saying it's your name. Yeah. Oh, Liz Morganelli, I live on Willow Street. Yes. Um, I just want to say you keep saying it's a no go, but Angela said that they would be willing to rediscuss. It's on, not up on to Tuesday. Up to the well, I know, but if maybe we, if we can bring it back to them on Tuesday, but if we do the best we can to get everybody involved, or you know, then maybe on Tuesday if we say these are the steps we've taken to talk to the principal. Even I'm assuming this is a pretty big deal to him. So even if you just send an email to him or call him, I'm sure he'd be interested in talking or, you know, coming to the meetings. And then if at that budget meeting, you can just say, these are the measures we've taken to let people know what's going on. And if he doesn't respond, he doesn't respond, but at least he tried. Well, that wouldn't happen at the budget meeting. But budget it could happen tomorrow's Friday. Send him an email tomorrow. Okay. Is there email. anyone else who needs to be notified at the school so they can be part of this discussion? It should all go through Principal Hartford. Caroline. Like 
applies if you're going to continue to pursue this this year. I would suggest that you visit the ordinance that I emailed the commissioners weeks ago about the time frame, which is not into January and when the plants close, but it is November 15th, the deadline for cutting into the road. And there was a permit attached to that ordinance, which I encouraged you all to fill out proactively, which I have not received. And so if you are going to look for an exception from that ordinance, I would encourage you to meet with the select board sooner rather than later to try to talk to them about their feelings because likewise they're going to have to do some planning with the road agent if there's to be any cutting in the road. Right. So, so it sounds like the meeting should be schools, us, select. Okay. So everybody gets in to see what's going on firsthand with the contractor so we know they explain what's happening at the ocean. Plus the contractor? Yes. Okay. That would be Ted Baring. Yes. I've been talking to Nick about doing the actual excavations. Because but, they know but Ted Berry would define the parameters where he has to have right. put in. And Nick would do so according to what he's requesting. Right. Okay. You know, okay. So I'll, 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 I'll Ted Berry tomorrow. Okay. See if they can come down. <clears throat> yes, Denise. Yes, I think also protocol would require you to do a request for proposal, which it hasn't been done. You picked the vendor, you didn't talk to anybody else about doing a project. When you're spending $120,000 $120, of people's money, you should be getting more than one quote. Thank you for your input. You're welcome. Clearly not going to do anything about it. But okay. Anyone else? We don't have to do the cutting and fitting cycle. Just like the You should. Time. It's people's money. You don't have to do a lot of things that you keep telling us, but you need to hear the people that you're going to be yes. spending a lot of their money. And you have yes. a question first before that. Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> Thank you. Well, she was first. I was. Uh, so I have a couple of questions for you. Uh, is it possible, I know how wrapped up you are in this firm and in getting all the details, particularly the RSAs and so forth. Is it possible to delegate that communication task with the school department to someone like Commissioner Michaud, who might take that forth and, and actually come up with a workable plan for everybody? Just a um, first question. And my second question is, have you communicated to the district the $194.53 cost per, per customer if this were to go forward? Ha do people have a heads up about that? No. No, that, that's what this is about. This is the public, this is the information here. Yes. So, uh, Mike Robinson, I'm a resident on Willie Street. So, as a resident on Willie Street, you know, where this project relates to, I, I'm just talking for myself. I haven't consulted with the Dagnalts or the Morganellians or, or uh, Paul over there. But, you know, one part of my frustration in the beginning was just <clears throat> there was no plan to address the Willie Street issues. In, in the beginning, there, it was something that was kind of going on for years without any sort of long-term plan. It, it kind of all got put on hold in the, in the spring. Well, anyway, I, I'm, I'm pleased to see there's urgency and there's focus and there's, there's escalation around this, this project. Uh, but, you know, it just sounds like there's a lot of pieces that still need to be put together or identified and all I'm saying is if if I have to wait another nine months to get the pipe replaced it's not going to kill me or my family like I just want to know that there's a plan in place to address it that's that's my concern and I can't speak for the Dagnalts I can't speak for Liz I can't speak for Paul but uh, that's that's how I feel okay our, our, our perception from the Willie Street residents was this is important, we want you to address it, and we want you to address it as soon as possible. That was the message we received. Loud and clear. We did. Yes, and I appreciate that. And, and I haven't talked to you, but <laughs> I, I kind of feel like Mike, I mean, I don't want to, you know, ram this thing through without being able to you know, have all the pieces together, and, and you're right, we've lived with this for two, three years now, um, you know, especially having the water, the clean water now to drink has been very helpful. Um, Definitely. You know, and, and, and 
It takes time to get things done, and it feels like this is progress that we're making. Yes, and, and certainly, I mean, the school would be grateful not to feel like this is being rushed through and that they have to jump it through hoops uh, to try to get it done. We want you all to have, you know, our neighbors there, we want you all to have clean water and, and, and be safe and all that. Um, so if we had to, we, we, we try to accommodate it, but it seems like a lot is trying to be pushed into the remaining 15 days that we might have to, to cut into cut into roads. and, and it, if this plan could be moved to even, you know, to be moved to April, and again, if you don't, if, if, if he can't, if, if this company can't commit to doing it in April, it does sound like an excellent solution um, for the April vacation time frame, or to June, but um, certainly, it, it seems like a lot is trying to happen in a very short period of time, which is why there's some of this confusion and, and, and lack of sort of communication and, and coordination. We may not be able to get a contractor that says, sure, no problem, we'll do it during a school vacation. They may say, I'm sorry, we're booked for that week. We can't do it that week. That, you know, we got to deal with that. Yes. Yeah. We had, last year, <coughs> that first really big snowstorm we had was on the 16th of um, November. Um, I know because my daughter was born on that day. We didn't get to um, so, so I guess my fear would be if we are pushing it, pushing it, and in the middle of this project we have a wicked snowstorm, and then it stalls the progress. Is there the chance that you know that road's going to be closed down for even longer? Or, and I just have to say that what Mike was saying. Um, we just wanted to know that there was a plan. And like he said, we it, it was just, you know, up in the air. We didn't know what was happening. There was no, and then now all of a sudden it seems like there's a plan and it sounds like a good plan. Um, but again, not letting people know that they're gonna be assessed a fee or, you know, and I know we've had these meetings, but I have to be honest that if I wasn't directly impacted, I don't know how aware of these meetings I would be. Um, there were some situations a couple years back where, you know, flyers were being handed out, but we weren't getting them. And so even, <laughs> you know, making sure that we deliver something to every door to let people know or anything like that. But just saying, as long as we have a plan, I mean, that's what was really important to, to us on Willie Street, knowing that, okay, in maybe nine months, we won't have this horrible discoloration, but we've been dealing with it for years. We've been okay. If we have a plan, when that's going to end, that's going to help us all a ton. Um, there is the reality that well, first of all, if it goes to the March meeting, there's not going to be an assessment. If it gets delayed, that it'll be a loan, which would drop the individual cost to something like eight dollars and sixty-four cents per quarter or something. Something very small, because we uh, finance it over like five years. It's only hundred six thousand know, dollars. It wouldn't be. It what? Did, you have something to share with us, Judith? Well, no, I, I, I just assumed that, I, I was thinking that you would put it in your budget for next year. That no. It, it, we oh, have that to bond. That's, why, that's why I went, oops, I It's a said major it. capital improvement. It should be bonded, or not bonded, should be in debt. It, it, those things, but they distort the budget too much, that's why. Yes, yes, you are. Paul, Paul Sam, something. I just wanted to add my voice to, to June and Mike and, and Liz. They're basically, even though I haven't talked to my wife, uh, <laughs> I would, would be okay with a more deliberate approach, even though I really appreciate uh, the efforts you guys are, are doing to, to research this and uh, get something in front of us. What happened? Now, it was very clearly stated the water bottles for two months. What happens at the end of that if you have to wait till August to get the water lines put in? We'll just keep buying water. We, we look, well, we're not done. <laughs> We've lived with this for a while, huh? uh, to be honest. And uh, okay, you know, if, if it's two months, we can, you know, kind of reevaluate things. But it's, uh, I, I, I'd rather do that than, than panic and. You know, I have some have some hard feelings, or um, 
have things be stopped because uh, eyes weren't dotted and T's weren't crossed. We're still members of the community. You know, we still want to make sure that what the decision that's being made is good for everybody or that everybody has an input or is at least informed. You know, we don't want to just be like, yes, do it right now. And then everybody's like, oh, jerks over on Willie Street, you know. That's oh, I never said that. We are members of this community, you know, and I think it's that, again, not wanting to speak for the whole road, but want to make sure that everybody's informed and okay, okay with this. And if it sounds like it's between a $200 assessment or waiting nine months and then it's a loan where those, you know, maybe some people, people, 65 cents, yeah. well, maybe people don't have $200 that they can just throw at this without even knowing about it, you know, and so giving the community a chance to just take that into account. Okay, we, we've talked about this before. How do you inform the community? And we've pointed out that not everybody is on Facebook. Not everybody spends a great deal of time on their computer looking at the town's website. Sending out mailings is expensive, and we have to send it to the entire town in order to do EDBM, the every door delivery thing. And that runs us about 250 bucks. What if people uh, volunteer to hand deliver? What if you miss a house? Somebody is going to say, you didn't deliver me one. I'm just trying to come up with solutions. You're very resistant. I'm just trying to Well, no, I'm not resistant. I'm being realistic, and that is there's just so many times you can inform the public by different methods that you will not get every time, and someone will be agreed. It's better than doing nothing, I guess is what I'm saying. We're having an informational hearing. That's one thing. But the only way people know about this is online, and if people aren't online, if we can get the majority of people mailing. Oh, so it's a Claire, are you online? No. Oh, how did you find out about it? Was it in the post oh, office posted. On. Okay. <coughs> I found it on the out? post. Yeah. It's, it's posted yes, in the it's post office. It's the way it's on. It's on. All right. Clam? I, I think at this point in time, we just take the first step, contact Ted Berry, and see if we can make arrangements and come down to talk to us, the school representatives, with the town representatives, and see what jails at that point in time. We need okay. to get make a point. And then we can decide what's going on. Okay. Then I'll, call them one. Tomorrow. okay. I'll call them tomorrow. Anyone else? Yes. yes. What if you sent out <laughs> some information with the bills when they go out? Mm -hmm. You're already paying for the postage at that time. It would cost right. you an envelope. Bills caught, well, we just sent one out, but it's supposed we won't send another one out until like December 31st. Right, but if you were planning for the following year to inform people Bills thirty seven cents because the postcard's gone. I don't know. What's the postage? I don't know. Oh, it's the, the bills cost thirty seven cents. We send them out to everyone, and we address them. They're fifty five cents each. Well, if you're talking yeah. about charging people one hundred and six bucks, I think it would be okay to spend a little more on postage to let okay. them know about that. Right. I think that we get the information that we need to do the job. Let's take step one. Then we can sit down and decide what we're going to do. Okay. It doesn't seem like there's a rush from everybody that's from Willow Street. Is that correct? I have a question over here. Yeah, I know there is. Yeah. Mike. No, uh, Mike. Mike. Go ahead. Yeah, she has her hand up. Yeah. I was waiting till everybody, but she had her hand up first. Oh, yes. Camera. Thanks, Mary. Oh, just um, the first thing I wanted to say is that listening to the people that live on Willow Street, I've lived there for 30 years. I am in the district that lives on Silver Street. My faith in humanity is completely by how wonderfully you are all handling this situation. Here, here. It truly is. Mm -hmm. And part of why I love this town is because of people like you. And I've done a lot of things. I've been involved in a lot of things. And there are a lot of really great people in this town. And what you are saying tonight is unbelievable. My concern for the budget meeting was the cost was all over the place. There were a lot of different stories being told. But the thing that really stuck out to me was we don't know what contingencies may occur mm. once we start the project. Yeah. So we can say $106,000, but we're talking about things underground that nobody has seen for 100 years. Anything could happen. Anywhere. So you're in a wetland. I, I'm on the concept. I know a lot about that. There's a lot of possibilities for things that could go wrong. And my concern this late in the year is the pipe they want to run overground is overground. It won't work if it's 
frozen. Mm -hmm. Even it only freezes at night. You can't really run water through a hose, right? I'm taking my hose down this weekend from my garden. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And potentially the school, because they haven't been notified at all to this point, has state obligations for how many days the kids have to be in school. I mean, they're, they're, it's a much more complex problem than the school doesn't know how to manage the buses. Mm -hmm. So it's just awesome to hear you say. And I will volunteer to start a fund to contribute to buy money for it. I mean, water for you guys. And I will also go door to door to every house in the district and deliver a flyer with you or anybody else who wants to volunteer. Because I've done things like that before. And I'm pretty sure we can get it. Else. It's not, you know, what's meant for Boston. Mm -hmm. So I just want to thank you so much. Because I was not looking forward to being here tonight. And now I'm really glad I came. So thank, thank you. you. Now, Mike? Yes. I was looking at the letter and the information on the estimated costs. Yes. And I'm unclear on the $25,000 for the excavation of access pits and lines to the houses. Yeah. I thought at the last meeting it was that the seven people on Willie Street had to pay to have the line to their house done. Mm -hmm. That's well, not now true. Now you're confusing two separate things. Okay. What they do is they dig pits in the street yeah. for three purposes to run the new line through. So there's going to be three of those. Three new lines? No. There are going to be three pits. Three holes. Got it. To run the line through. Okay? At each house, the access point, the curb box for that house has to be dug up so they can connect to the new line. Okay? So there are four houses and the school. So that's five smaller pits. Well, you've got to connect the school. There's four houses and the school. So well, that's five smaller pits because they're just basically going down the curb stop to connect to the new line. Okay? Between the curb stop and the house, the state would recommend that you consider putting in a new line between the curb. So the $25,000 covers what you just described? What I just described was the three major pits plus the four houses and the school to get down to the curb box. So the process we're talking about whenever it gets done, the old line to the houses or to the school would be connected unless the, the owners or representatives of those lines decides to put a new line into their unit. It would be advantageous that they do it at that time, yes. So we don't take up, nobody has to dig up their front lawn. Wouldn't they have to dig up their front lawn to replace their pipe to their building? No, not okay. necessarily. Fine. Not necessarily. Because they can do it the same way that you're doing the larger pipe? Well, it depends on what type of pipe you have and whether it was laid in sand or in clay. Okay. You can pull a new line through behind the old one, in some cases. I'm, so are all the Willie Street yeah. residents aware of that? And the school is aware that they may have to have money to put in a There's line? There's no have to. It's I know, but that's their decision, correct? That's their yes. decision, correct. But they don't know about it, so when are they going to make this decision? Well, what were the costs? I mean, we'd have to know. I mean, the cost to run a line to the school would be, I don't know how much, but. And who's going to and it's, The that? school may decide that the two-inch line they have now is perfectly adequate. In which case, it would be fine. So, so how That's just a recommendation that? from the state, not a, an order or a requirement. So, so the people that are here from Willie Street, they're fine with that? They understand that? Yeah. They didn't you didn't know? No. Did you know? You're welcome, sir. You didn't you did know? know. So, so you guys? I hadn't really thought about it. I was not aware. Until I saw the budget. Committee. Well, when did you put in your new water line? It probably was the I last think the 15 years. Done in the 10 years? Mid 80s. Late mid 80s? 80s. Okay. Oh, still it's probably yeah. PVC. Uh, it's copper. It's copper? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's probably yeah. going to outlast the well, next ice oh, age. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Can you call me, please? Mike, I know 15 more this week. I'm the last one on the release week, and I haven't yeah. spoken to you. Mm -hmm. Water lines, my house, Paul's house. Mike's house, we're all put in in the late 80s. Uh -huh. 87, mine was 87, 86, and 87. Okay. So they were all copper, three quarter inch, flexible, soft copper. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what 
that's what you use. Now, I don't know about Peter, Peter and Liz. Liz is the only older house on the street. You know, it's mm -hmm. funny. I bought my house in 1985, and at that time, I had a PVC three-quarter inch line. I didn't have pocket. I was there. I was there. So, so I have a question for these residents on Willie Street. What kind of access would they have to have this conversation with the people that would be doing the work, the company? Well, again, uh, if we can get someone from Petbury down here, they'll address the issues of the school, the town, and all the right, so And if residents want to come and talk to them and say, well, what about me? You know, they can ask. In fact, in South Berwick, in South, according to... Um, What's his first name? Coleman. Mm -hmm. That's South Berwick. At Nick said they did those water lines in South Berwick, and there they contracted them to replace the lines to the houses, and they did. It's a great, great process that would be helpful to have in advance of contracting just to the curb. Maybe the residents of Willie Street would prefer that approach to have a conversation with a contractor, with the company, Ted... Ted Barry. Ted Barry, Barry. thank you. Um, perhaps that would be a, a real advantageous approach for the people on Willie Street. And so that's just a comment. But I, I do want to also comment on the fact that it is possible for us to have a warrant article and not a loan. We have other assets in this re district that will need attention at some point. Yep. So I personally would prefer not to lock myself into another loan and look at the opportunity for a warrant article that would get assessed in, the, in that one year. That makes sense to me rather than to take a loan for $100,000 and pay it off in five years. I don't know about everybody else, but we do have the option of a warrant article. We've done that already. This uh, past year we had a warrant article, and we're paying for that okay. now, as part of our budget. Okay, let's stop and take from that. You put it into the operating budget. You're going to have to amortize that cost over one year. How much will that be? $194 per household. Now, you may split it into quarters. Okay, now let's loan it. Let's borrow it. What we call leveraging. It's $8.64 per quarter. Yes, but it still can be done through a warrant article. Uh, a loan is done through a warrant. But I think Angela, in my mind, Angela's getting at the point that you brought up in a few months ago about if we borrow all this money, we won't have money or capacity to borrow against in the future for other large infrastructure right. upgrades. Right. Which is why we're not going to do 10 years or 15 years, I, I suggest. <clears throat> okay. but, but to her point, too, I mean, there's options, right? Like, we could vote on the, the specific type of how we want to fund it, can we? Or you're no, saying it's no. It's either you give us the authority, you give yourselves the authority to borrow, or you don't. Can you clarify that? If you go through the town warrant articles for borrowing, it says nothing about term and rate and... No, no, no. Well, no I wasn't asking. suggesting borrowing through a warrant article. I was suggesting a warrant article that would fund this so that we would not have to borrow for this project. I, know. I just want to be clear about what I was saying. A warrant article to put it in your operating budget mm -hmm. or to borrow is still a warrant article. Right, but I'm not talking about right. So, so wait, Angela, help me out. When you, well, okay. The way you're describing, where would the money come from? It would be built into the budget? It would be built into the budget. It goes into the operating budget, but it is for a capital project and must be spent for that. So is it funds that, are, that would already be coming into the budget, but it would just be allocated specifically for Correct. that project? And it would be the fee that we each pay quarterly. For example, the pump galley is a great example. It was in a warrant article, and as far as I know, the pump galley is underway. Last time we were in this room and talked about the pump galley, we heard some progress on it. So anyway, it went into the operating budget, but it was for that specific earmark for that no, project. It did not and, the, and the commissioners have some latitude with what they do with those funds, but we voted on spending that uh, $80,000 on a uh, pump gallon. No, it did not go in the operating budget. It was a warrant article. It was separate. It came out of fund balance, so it's actually separate. You say the title. Operating budget is the operating budget. <laughs>
So, so just for clarification, you're describing the operating budget to you is is for day-to-day -day expenses. It's not for projects. Generally, no. Okay. But not always. Okay. I mean, the town, for instance, puts in three hundred and some odd thousand dollars to pave the roads in their operating. <coughs> I don't happen to agree that that's the wise way to do it. It should be a warrant article for that purpose. But, okay. you know, so, so the, people the, can the, have... Yeah, the, the way I understand what you're saying is, you know, we have our own checking account for mortgage payments, utility bills, yes. et cetera. But then you have a savings account for Christmas, or you have a savings account for child Hanukkah. care, or Hanukkah. Yes, sorry. <laughs> I'm not trying to be uh, specific. But, a significant uh, national holiday. Okay. Let it go. I think I understand. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But what he started to bring up is several different ways. You could do it the way it was originally proposed here, which is a fee, which can, if it goes to next year, it would be split into four, I would presume. Is that correct? Yeah. So you get four quarters. One quarter of it basically is 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then, or you can put it into a loan, which comes out to that. Yeah, I, I, I personally, I, I, personally, I'm a fan of just paying for it as soon as as quickly as possible. But I realize other people are in different positions than, than we are, so that was the original proposal for discussion. Yeah, and that way there is nothing holding their head. Right, right. But we'll have to see what the rest I mean, of it is. If we went to the New Hampshire, for example, if we went to the New Hampshire bond bank, yes. they'd say replacing a water line. And it's only four feet long. Thirty years, fixed, no no discussion. Same with um, USDA. You come in, you want to do a significant water line. Thirty years, no discussion. We go to Northway Bank. They go, what term would you like? Which is why I like it. But that's open. That's open for discussion. Right. How, how, how much more interest would you pay? A loan for five years. I mean, is it a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars? Pretty interest so as opposed to as, well, if we just paid it in a year, right? If we paid it out of our budget and whatnot, if we just paid it out rather than borrowing money, it's yes. What would the interest be if we borrowed money as opposed to us just paying? Well, it's the same as why you probably have a home equity line because there are times when you want to take a certain amount of money and use it even though you're going to have to pay in for something, because you don't have all that cash sitting aside to do it. Right. But if we have an option to pay within a year, I mean, what's what's the interest going to be? Is it going to be $10,000? Is it $5,000 or over five years? I, on, I on didn't pay. look at the cumulative interest, but it's not much. I think it's like $3,000, but I'm, you know, I'm just okay. guessing. Okay. It's not that much. It's not I mean, money's practically free these days to borrow. I can remember it was 17%. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, if it's $10,000. Yes, yes. Bert, why can't, it's going to be what, $106,000 you said? About that, yeah. How much cash do we have? 80000 and what, what about that 300000 we have in other, in other... Go for it, Glenn. It's no, fine. I'm just asking. I, I, don't get mad. It's, no, I'm, I'm just checking my camera to make sure it didn't shut off. You just, you turned around and you looked at that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it, at the previous meeting, we split that. One right. Two thirds water and sewer. Two right. thirds is sewer and one third is water. So you don't have enough money in a water account that covers the total cost of what you're planning. You were saying right now. Why can't you borrow it from the source? No, no you no. can't. Because the RSA says sewer funds can be only used for sewer. And one of us can only use for water. That's what was the biggest problem we had in separating that in the point of the One department can't loan to another department. And then you'd have to charge interest. That's only fair if you could do it. So why not go to a bank and make it nice and clean? Why don't you 
explore, see if you can do it. So the sewer department say, hey, we'll loan you the money, but we'll give you five years from the fund. We can't. We've already taken that through the attorney. It's like saying, I'm going to loan myself. These are options that you guys know. This is always a valid question. But that's that's why it's not There's got to be a way to tap in that money. That's also why it's split up. If you look at the cost on your bill, most of your bill, now there's some people here that have water, but not the sewer. That's me. So you know what I'm talking about. Your bill is rather slim. On the other end, people that have water and sewer, what happens is now they're paying a lot more. So that's the reason that they're split. So that their sewer money is going to sewer, not to supplement water. Some of you may have seen us create the uh, capital reserve accounts. Right. We were specifically told by our attorney and by uh, municipal association they have to be distinct, and you can only use them for either wastewater or water, but you cannot combine them and you can't overlap them. <coughs> so, am I missing something that out of the three hundred thousand, wouldn't there be a hundred thousand in water? We have a no. Actually, we're going to spend fifty thousand in the pump alley, so it's down to two hundred and fifty thousand, okay. approximately two sixty. Two sixty-two. Okay. okay. But that only came out of the water. I mean, the wastewater. Wastewater. Still would have But our auditor said that account should not go below two hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. It is a in case of a dire emergency. That's where you spend that. The rest of it. Okay. So. Uh, we have explored. I have explored. We have explored every conceivable way of doing this. That's legal. <laughs> now, now. Okay. okay. And this is the best solution we have that causes the least damage and gives us the greatest flexibility. Okay. I appreciate that. Um, two comments. One is on the Willie Street people. I brought this up when I spoke with Bob before. I don't understand if we're not deliver, able to deliver the quality of water that's um, needed, why they're getting charged for water until the problem is solved. That would, I mean, I know you're doing two months of water delivery. Does that include the school, by the way? No. They're not having the issue? We do they not have the issue. Have oh, the that's issue. good. All right. So it seems to me that not charging Willie Street for water until you can fix it would make sense. That's my They comment. would, except they keep flushing their toilets. Yeah, Don't they pay for sewer? That's yes. how it's built. Oh, that's but water, they get water to flush their toilets. <laughs> okay. The water you drink out of the, the supply you get is relatively a minor part of your usage usually. Okay. Thank you. And the other comment is, I still completely disagree with this charging per customer. Okay. Or I imagine that it's, is that the same as per, per meter? Per meter? Yeah. We had to have a number. That's what we chose. I know, but it is different with how, than how we're being charged now for water and sewer. Right. And That's I just right don't now. think that a district suddenly decides to charge differently without telling the members. Well, I don't like it, I guess is what I'm saying. I think it's not, it doesn't show transparency. Well, then we'll charge by unit. If we decide to change the rate structure, we'll have a public hearing. But isn't this the rate structure? No. That's just a way of figuring out how much this would impact each household. And we just use meters. Right. But, and we've had this discussion, and I... If I'm not understanding, I want to understand. It's a theoretical number. It's not a theoretical number. When you make an approach to how to charge people, and you do it differently than how we're charging now, then it does come out, I'm sorry to say, as people who have multiple units, like two of you on the board, making it work for you. And it just doesn't make sense to me. And as I explained to you the last time, part of the problem is, they have been illegally charging people with multi-units, well, 
as though they're multiple houses for years. I don't know who they is. You're the commission and that's we how we get now, charged. Which is part of the reason why it's being looked at. Well, look at it, but don't make a difference on this particular issue. Well, It's not the time to fix it, Bob. When is the time to fix it? When you as a commission have time and the energy to do it. Okay, remember, this is all theoretical. At this point, we're dead in the water. So, arguing about it, should you do it by households or by meters, it's, that's all academic now. It does not matter at this point because yeah. there's no vote. It matters to me if you get the approval and decide to do it without any other discussion or without people knowing I, it. I said at this point, barring people intervention, we're dead in the water. So I don't want the meeting before we do anything anyway. Half of this and meeting is about what can be done tomorrow. Up. Huh? Part of this meeting, a large part, is about what calls you're going to make tomorrow, talking to the school, going back to the board, and you're saying we're dead in the water. We're all trying to help I'm, you. Wait a minute. I'm trying to address the issue of people want more information. Okay? I'm not moving this project forward. I'm trying to get people more information. And they want to meet the principal, the town, probably the road department, and the commissioners. We just want more information. They want to talk to uh, Ted Berry Company. It's just informational. Just informational. It doesn't move this project forward at all, necessarily. Yes, right. Um, when this meeting takes place, am I going to be president? Because I would like to be a part of the, the conversation with Ted Berry to hear exactly. Oh, yes, of course. Okay. Of course. You're cordially invited. Of course, getting everybody together may be a problem, but you know everybody's schedules these days. Yes. Um, I was wondering um, something that I heard earlier. Are there other companies that do this pipe bursting technique yes. besides this company? Yes. And were any others consulted? Not so far. Uh, do you plan to do a comparison? We're, at this point, I don't have the time. I'm paid $1,100 a year to be a teacher. I don't have the time to be a full-time district administrator. So I'm going to go with the best thing I got, which is Ted Barry. Do I have a superintendent? Yes. Well, time? he's got enough fish to fry. Yes. Now, you said they worked in York. And a Gunquit? They've done projects in York, a Gunquit, Massachusetts, all of Maine, many parts of New Hampshire. They have a So long they, they have gone into what I'd say money places? Oh yes. Yeah. And we ha we haven't we so you're hearing good things about this company? Oh yeah. So we're kind of lucky to get somebody to come quickly for this tiny little you didn't town. Say quickly. Well, I mean, you know what I'm saying. Because when you get on a list of waiting. It's sometimes a real wait, wait, waiting list. Okay. All right. I'm just wondering, this is a very... More importantly, to answer your question, yep. we got the recommendation for them to be two different engineering companies who would use them, specifically on large operations. And so when you have somebody that's not being paid to give you an opinion, and we talk to them and they give you an opinion, that kind of tells you that they've been real happy with people. Well, I'm just saying, you offer Gunkwood... Places like that do not go. Nantucket was one. Nantucket too? Wow. Chase? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm getting a very glass is half empty feeling from you. Yeah. Um, are you, are we, is this project dead to you or is it still, because I, I'm sensing from members of the budget committee that there's still hope, we need to do things, we need to do a little bit more planning, check off a few more boxes, get more people involved in the decision making and the coordinating and the planning, um, which it, and it doesn't seem out of the realm of possibility to still get this thing done, but every time I hear you speak, it just sounds like, okay, well, I don't know. Um, you, it, it doesn't sound like you, you're gonna give it an effort and. If, if the project is considered dead, and that's, I just, I just don't, what are, we, what are we expecting now? I mean, should we expect for things to be 
uh, hurried up? Should we expect this product to possibly go in December? Or have you committed to, okay, we're just going to wait till March? I just, I don't know. I can't read you. I have no idea what. I think the biggest thing to look forward to now is the meeting that's going to take place between the commissioners and everybody that's supposed to be involved in. That'll determine the timeline. Right now, we have no idea. <coughs> I guess because they don't know what the impact's going to be with the school, everybody. Oh, absolutely. The same time. I guess my point is, I just, I don't feel, Vern, I, I don't sense that you're taking it very seriously when, when we say we have to meet with these people. Just from your tone of voice, you might be serious. You, you might. I just, what I'm reading from you is that you're not taking it very seriously that we have to meet with these people if we are going to get it done. And I, I mean, I would like this if it's possible and if it's reasonable and we can get it done in December. Even though I mean, the residents of Willie Street have said we're, we're welcome to let it go by, I mean, I just I, I, I can't read it. And if that's what we're gonna do. I, I'd say if it's an, uh, still an option to do it in December, and we can take it seriously and coordinate with people, I just I wouldn't I don't want to half-ass it. From my standpoint, yeah. if we can get this done, this has been an albatross, and the sooner we get this done, the better. But that's also up to the budget committee, okay? Mm -hmm. And if they decide they don't like it for whatever reason, it is dead in the water. And if when we send it to the state, they say that's not really an emergency, it's still dead in the water, yeah. then it has to wait until next year. Yeah. Okay? And so, I don't, and, yeah. And I know, it, but part of the frustration is, for example, the, the thing came up that we weren't speaking to the school. Well, Vern spoke to a guy that's being paid to be. Uh, what's his official title there? The facilities, facilities manager. And he apparently didn't pass it on to anybody else. But we're paying somebody who's supposed to be doing that, and it didn't come forward. So that was probably the biggest part of it. That and the fact that none of us had little kids and didn't realize last night was, was uh, Halloween, you know? And then trying to agree on a date for, we don't care when the meeting is. Really, the three of us, we're all there on Saturday morning, right? but it was a big deal among others at the planning board. It was a huge deal. So, budget. Yeah, budget, excuse me. Um, and we, we didn't put in all this work, okay? Budget committee, was, why didn't we know about this last week? Because we didn't have it last week when we went to them. When you're saying 250000 and we had somebody who knew it for less than half, Oh, hell yeah, we're interested. Particularly when we get engineering firms that we know that have used these people before and say, this is a slick way to go, and it's cheaper, and it's more efficient, and it works better. That's the position, so nobody's really dead in the water. But it is dead in the water at any one of those stops, and you need to understand that, because maybe that didn't become clear on all of this. Well, I understand that. I just, my point was, I don't, it doesn't sound like it's completely dead. And if they have you know certain tasks that we need to do, I just hope, would hope that you guys just take it seriously. Part you know, meet, meet, just look into talking to whoever, and then maybe bring it up to them again or whatnot. Yeah. It, and I want to say, as a Willow Street resident, I mean, I think we're a patient group. But um, if you know, if everything lined up right and we could get this company to do it, I mean, I certainly the sooner the better. Yeah. Um, I just don't want it to be half-assed or you know, I mean. If, you have to follow a process, or it's you know you can't go in crisis. Let me ask the people on Willie Street. When they do this, you're not going to be able to get to your houses by your car because the street will be shut off. Are you okay with that? Uh, uh, well, I think we'll pack, pack down. Yeah. Maybe we'll park at your house, the Teresa's or Rose Patrick's. Patrick's. Yeah. 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 The process yeah. yeah. being what it is, you'll have your pit at either end and the one in the middle. You should have access by one of those pits on the ends of the other streets to come in. Not in all cases. Not all through. Wherever I see all videos, I've seen these things, and where they were digging, they had traffic going through in a row at the same time. I, right. I understand that, but that may not be the case on Willow I know, but that's what we have to talk to them and find out. They don't know where the pipes are yet. We have to go to HTA to get their map. They have a map. Good sure. <laughs> Simple, six, 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 nine, four, five, 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 five,
as the Commission are going through to, to resolve this problem. I don't appreciate the blaming because what blaming? six months ago, six months ago, we were asking for action. And we didn't know about this particular solution until two weeks ago. I do get that. But I just want to remind everyone that microphones were shut off when people were trying to ask for solutions, that oftentimes meetings got contentious and the police were called. It's great that we are at a place where we're communicating with each other, and I really appreciate that. But I am not going to forget that it was not without some resistance from you as commissioners around the money and the expenses that we didn't move forward faster. We found a good solution and I am really pleased that that happened. But I want just to remember that this has not been an easy road and, no, that, and that we're talking and we're communicating now and that's great. But there were six months where that wasn't happening and we wasted time. So we makes it to the fault of the budget committee and please let's not hold the budget committee responsible for this situation. Allison. Um, I just wanted to point out that in the purchasing policy that the commissioners um, drew up, it does say that anything over $25,000 requires a competitive bid system, not a fee. Optional. Yeah. It doesn't say optional. Yeah. As necessary. We have a sole source. Take a look at it. You may not have the most. I probably don't. And I also remember many times asking me to do about it. I think we've hashed this out enough. We've gone as far as we can, given that there are a lot of unknowns out there. We will attempt to get a meeting together with somebody from Ted Ferry and the school and the town and George from the highway department, I'm sure, so that we can, and Ray, of course, so that we can sit down and ask all the questions that you need to have answered, that they can answer. Okay? The hearing portion of this meeting is therefore okay, seek a motion to close Second. the hearing. Second. Aye. Okay. You now on to business. Now I go on to the rest of the meeting. I'm asking you. 